Watching the world burn, watching the world burn, September 3rd, 2023. Let's get into it. The first thing is, uh, you, if you haven't checked it out, you got to check out the Tucker Carlson uh, interview with uh, Orban, uh, Viktor Orban, uh, the uh, leader of Hungary. And uh, man, I tell you, and then Viktor came out, he just said, he says, oh, no way Ukraine's going to <laughs> gonna win this war you know russia's got uh what hundreds of millions of people and uh ukraine is down to i don't know 14 million um and and now they're doing another mobilization so um yeah yeah i i think he pissed victor orban uh he just pissed off everybody in nato because <laughs> i tell you what if you watch the news you'd think that the uh, ukraine is marching on crimea right now you know i mean uh oh actually they probably if you watch the news, they have crossed the border into Russia and they are on their way to Moscow. That's that's the news that I get out of our Western media, uh, just just to say. By the way, Garbon, Africa. Have you been following along on that? I mean, it's uh, the French are having a real bad time <laughs> with all of their colonial conquest in Africa. I mean, first it was Niger, uh, and then the other countries, and then uh, and then now Garbon. Uh, and by the way, Niger is, uh, they're saying, you know, hey, because the, the French ambassador said it wasn't going to leave, and the French said they're not going to take their troops out. Niger's saying, no, no, you ain't got a choice. Uh, take them out or else. So, boy, we could we could go kinetic in that battle. That that might that might go kinetic. What about in Haiti? Uh, you know, definitely the United States wants to invade Haiti again. The, there's two conflicting uh, organizations uh that were fighting each other. If you want to look at them as like cartels or whatever, it's kind of like the in Afghanistan where they had one uh, leader, uh, what do you call them, uh, lords, uh, and then another leader, and they were fighting each other. Well, these guys got together and said, no, man, we're, we're, we're making a peace arrangement. And so they're ready. They, they've, uh, and, of course, the, the State Department has told Americans to leave Haiti, but that's so that we can send the, the U.S. troops in there. So I think that, you know, the U.S. may have a little bit of a fight on their hands. Uh, it won't be much of a fight. Uh, when I say that, uh, they, certainly there's going to be guerrilla activity against U.S. troops uh, when they land in Haiti to reinst reinstate the, uh, the government there, um, that, you know, to make sure the government stays in power. So we'll see. Uh, Donbass, uh, it's still being shelled. Uh, if you want to watch uh, Redacted, uh, there, Patrick, uh, he's on there. He's he's a reporter. Basically, I mean, if you want to look at him, he's an American living in, in Russia. He speaks, can you imagine being able to speak Ukrainian, Russian, and English? <laughs> my, my, my brain would just explode trying to keep those three languages in there. Uh, Patrick Lancaster, I think that's his last name. Uh, he's in there. Uh, you definitely encourage you to watch Redacted and see what's going on. Uh, but he's showing that uh, the Ukrainians are still killing Ukrainians. Because, uh, well, if you want to look at it, these are Russian separatists who, who decided that they wanted to become part of Russia with the uh, uh, the vote. And so Ukrainians, uh, they feel like, of course, it, if you listen to Ukraine, they're supposed to be Ukrainians. And, and anyway, they're killing them. By the way, there was an airport in uh, northern Russia. If you haven't followed on the news, uh, it was attacked by some drones. A lot of speculation that it came out of uh, one of the Baltic countries, uh, I think Lithuania, uh, or it came off of a boat out in the uh, Baltic Sea. No way it came from 800 miles south out of Ukraine, uh, and Russia's being real quiet about it. So we don't know who launched the attack. Was it NATO? Probably. That'd be my guess. And did it come out of the Lithuanian countries? The fact that Russia is being so silent about it, because I, you know, they're trying not to escalate the war with NATO. It's it's a balancing act, you know. Uh, but I don't think I don't think they're going to have any choice. I uh, we got Robotine. I'm, I'm not sure I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, that's the attack that the Ukrainian counteroffensive. They took a small village. There used to be like 400 people that lived there. Uh, this is being promoted in the Western news as like the greatest thing ever. Uh, they've breached the first line of Russian defense, uh, which if you know anything about Russian defense, that's exactly what it's designed to do is be breached. Then, of course, the reports are coming out that Robotine 
hasn't been taken over uh, and that the Ukrainians are now attacking in other places. Who knows? All I know is that from everything that the Russians are reporting, and that's the only news that I get, I don't get anything out of Ukraine, certainly out of the Western media, is that uh, basically 500 to 1,000 Ukrainians a day are dying in this uh, continued uh, so-called counteroffensive uh, that's been going on, when, what, three months now? <laughs> so so I, I don't see how they can sustain these casualties. If, if the Russians are correct, and I have no reason to doubt them, everybody that I follow on Twitter, I, don't, I, I just don't see it. So now the, the, another huge thing that I've been kind of thinking about is the, um, the Russian military industrial complex versus the United States military industrial complex. Because what I'm seeing with the realignment of the world is that there's a big demand for the Russian military equipment now. Because all they've done is just destroyed <laughs> all the NATO equipment. I mean, just just obliterated it. Now, that could be because the, the tactics of the Ukrainians or, or just the fact that, you know, they didn't have air support. Uh, you could look at it that way. But at the same time, Russian military cells. So what what's, what's the last... Uh, industrial complex that we have here in the United States. It's the United States military industrial complex. So if the whole world wants to buy Russian military equipment, whoo, I, I just wonder, I, I, I'm just, if you want to leave a comment below, what do you think? Uh, if we can't sell our military equipment around the world and everybody wants Russian military equipment, it's just something, uh, um, anyway. Uh, the, the northern offensive, the Russians are moving slowly there, uh, and I Boy, I have a hard time pronouncing this. Kosh Narovikia. Uh, well, it should fall soon, uh, from what I can tell. The Russians pretty much have it surrounded. Uh, that's a, actually a pretty big city. So we'll see, uh, we'll see what that uh, happens. Lots of news, lots of speculation that the getting onto a whole different topic the Bank of America and Charles Schwab. Uh, now, I have money uh, in the Charles Schwab brokerage. Now, I don't think the brokerage. Uh, Charles Schwab is uh, in jeopardy, but I think the bank is, is, is in jeopardy. And I certainly Bank of America, a lot of news coming out about, about those two entities. I moved my, um, the funds that I had at Charles Schwab because, well, what happened? USAA is where I had in the brokerage account. And then Charles Schwab took over the USAA uh, brokerage. So I ended up with money at Charles Schwab. And then I was like, well, it's good to have money in multiple places. And then finally, after I heard about Charles Schwab Bank having difficulty, I just moved it off to Fidelity. That's just me. This isn't, this isn't financial advice. I'm just telling you that, you know, you might want to think about. Uh, Douglas McGregor was on uh, Our Country, Our Choice. Dot, I think it's dot .org. Oh, don't quote me on that. I haven't been to the website, but I'm going to definitely join up with that. It's, uh, it's an organization that he's put together. And they're trying to fight back against the globalist. And so we'll see uh, what happens there. Boy, I tell you, I'm just all over the board here, Wayne, you know, <laughs> with this video. Palladium and platinum. Now, I've taken a big loss on the Sprott ETF. Uh, I think it's SPPP. You can go to Sprott, Sprott.com. You can look at their ETFs. It's the palladium platinum uh, ETF. Uh, right from everything that I'm seeing, palladium is going to take a big, big jump. So it might be a good time, uh, just what I'm doing, just, you know, this is an investment advice. It might be a good time to get into that ETF. I'm going to buy some more, uh, you know, and sometimes, you know, when you have a good investment and you lose a lot of money, if, as long as you think the investment is still good, you buy it on the way down. And so I think that uh, I think that's going to be good. I was listening to the radio today. And because uh, I, I finally the weather broke here in Florida. And so I went out for a major hike. I think I hiked like two hours down by the Oklawaha River. I'm listening to Dana Lash because I, I, I like her channel. She's got this. Uh, my favorite segment on her show is the Florida Man. because <laughs> it's, it's incredibly uh, entertaining about how stupid people are here in Florida. You know, and it, she's always got some crazy, crazy stuff that you listen to and you go like, Wow, that's insane. But, you know, I consider her kind of a, well, she's a big gun advocate, and I like that about her. But, you know, you listen to her or Sean Hannity and stuff, these commentators are, are very uninformed. 
And uh, I guess, uh, what is it? Um, what's that new, uh, that Indian candidate? Uh, anyway, I can't think of his name right now, but she was going on about how he commented uh, on the Nord Stream pipeline and said that the United States blew it up and, and she thought he was being stupid by saying that. And, and I was like, how uninformed is she? I mean, doesn't she know that Cy Hirsch put out a paper that basically laid out the whole what happened to the Nord Stream pipeline? I, I guess she still thinks that the Russians blew up their own damn pipeline. <laughs> I mean, just, and so, you know, I'm looking at Dana Lash going like, how stupid is, are these commentators? I mean, they're just completely uninformed about stuff. Uh, it just blows my mind. I did want to comment on uh, silver a little bit. Um, now, if if we do enter into a financial calamity, as as I feel that we will, you're you're going to see a fall in the and silver and gold and platinum palladium prices, which would be a good time if you've got a little bit of uh, liquidity on the side. Don't, by the way, but definitely keep liquidity. You're going to need it. You're going to need it. Don't, don't, you know, don't go out there and overinvest. Make sure that even though you're losing money, it was pointed out today that uh, the really inflation rate is about 7%. And uh, one month treasuries right now are at about 5%. So even if you're buying into the one month treasuries, you're still net negative uh, 2, 2%. On your investment but but you have to have that liquidity and you, if you look I mean just look at Warren Buffett think about how much money he's losing I don't know where he's got he's got everything in cash now it, as in cash I wonder where he's, he's got it I mean like if you look at the fidelity uh, uh, money market funds uh, I, I can kind of consider them cash because I can use them just like a, a bank account um, and they're paying about five percent so that's probably what I'm guessing is more, well, when you got billions, of, $8 billion, eight, what is it, 8.5 or $8.4 billion that he sold in stock to, to increase his liquidity? Because he's, obviously he's anticipating a major drop in the stock market, just, just want to say. So, but anyway, so what you can expect is that the precious metals are going to drop if, if, if we get that black swan event, which I think we will. And then they're going to rise again and, and, and rise exponentially. It's going to be huge. I, I figure that Rick Rule threw out, I did not know this. He says one half of 1% of Americans hold precious metals. That's a mind-blowing number. I would have thought with all the stuff, I guess it's because I'm so immersed in all of that. And, and so what he was pointing out in the video was that what you're going to have in a, in, a, in a black swan event or a, um, a financial crisis is that you're going to have what's called a reversion to mean, a reversion to mean, which means that precious metals, uh, you know, they've been, they've been held down artificially by the, uh, the, the banking industry. And so what could happen, you could see $10,000 gold. And I'm not saying you will. I mean, and then if, if silver goes up to about a 15 to 1 ratio, which is where it has been historically, uh, it could be impressive. Uh, and by the way, one, one of the things that Rick Rule pointed out is you don't own gold or silver or platinum or palladium to make money. It's just, it's just a, a, a rock that sits in your, your portfolio in case uh, there's a disaster, you know, in the financial system. You know, and, and, and it's also liquid. You can always go and, and, you know, sell your silver if you bought it at 26 and you got to sell it at 24. That's still not a big loss. It's not like a bond. You know, you could buy a bond at 124 and have to sell it at, at 60. Uh, you're, you're not going to take that kind of losses on precious metals. It's just it's just a store of value. And that's the way you have to look at it. It's not an investment. OK, I want you to understand that. But one of the numbers that he threw out was back in the year 2000, gold was at $253 an ounce. So let's see, we are at 2023, and we're looking at about uh, $1,900 to $2,000 an ounce. So was that store of value a good, I wouldn't call it investment, but a place to, to, to keep the value of your money? Yes, it was. So I wanted to get into to my Twitter stuff here just a little bit uh we're gonna go into the replies i thought that because i i do i do enjoy 
my interaction with people. And, uh, and Douglas McGregor, uh, who is phenomenally smart, uh, he put out a video uh, or a, a, a tweet about the fact that at some point we're going to have to shut down the southern border. And I said, there's no way we're going to shut down the southern border because all the people that are pouring into the country, the Democrats look at as, as new votes. They're basically wanting to, they know that a lot of their voters, uh, let's say a few blacks, uh, a lot of Hispanics, uh, certainly the, uh, some of the uh, liberal Democrats, they're, they're turning away from the Democrat Party. So they need a new constituency to vote for the Democrat Party, and that's the way they view the illegal immigrants. And if you want evidence of that, you just got to look at like uh, New York or whatever. Uh, the illegal immigrants are, are put up in fancy hotels while, you know, the Democrat voters are, are, are asleep on the streets and homeless, you know, so they're taking care of their own. Look at Maui. Oh, my God. I, what, he gave them $750 because <laughs> their house burnt down? They don't care about the Democrat voters because they're developing a whole new constituency to vote Democrat. So, yeah, yeah, and, and I got a I gotta tweet about that. I, I'm going to read you what I said to Douglas. I said, Douglas, with great respect, for the first time, I agree to disagree. The Democrats view the illegal immigrants as a new voting bloc and will never shut down the border. The Democrats and the three-letter agencies are making vast sums of money from the cartels. The only way the border gets closed is a change in the uniparty government. So when I say uniparty government, we're talking about the, the rhino Republicans and the Democrats. They're all in cahoots together, and that's why everybody gets pissed off at the Republicans, because we got too many rhinos in there. But hopefully that'll change. Uh, we'll see. It's, it's going to take a, a huge thing. I, Oh, there's been a black guy. He got pissed off. I'll get to that. I told him I was raised by a black woman. And by the way, I can tell you her name. If you ever want to, because a lot of people, they do think that, you know, you're lying to them. Her name was Geraldine Morris. She's buried in a Civil War cemetery. Actually, a Confederate Civil War cemetery in Lynchburg, Virginia. Her name was Geraldine Morris, and the uh, greatest woman ever. Worked for every dime she ever had. Wouldn't accept a dime from the government. And man, she beat me when I was young. <laughs> she just wouldn't let me get away with anything. Uh, but she raised me. All right, so we're going to get into that. Oh, uh, let's see. Uh, who's the baddie here? Uh, in the end, well, and this was something that I pointed out because uh, they were talking about how we can just continue to print money, print money, print money to fund the war or print money. It's print currency. And I said, in the end, it's just all printed fake currency. And, and it, once people lose faith in the currency, we're, we're with $32 trillion in debt now. Uh, well, if you take on the other things, we're hundreds of trillions of dollars in debt. So eventually the, the dollar, it's just not going to work. I just don't see it going long. And then uh, it, it, there was another one that was somebody was, you know, that we've got a new pandemic coming. They're already talking about it. And the Russians have put out notice that the American biological labs are going to release another virus upon the world. Um, that's when I say that, I mean, they haven't officially stated that, but that's that's what's coming out on on the scuttlebutt. And, and you can believe it because uh, there are certain hospitals in the United States now that are requiring masks again for whatever reason. Uh, there's a new variant, of course, of COVID. Now, I haven't heard that it's killing m millions of people or anything like that. But it seems like they are prepping for a new pandemic, just to, just to say. I'm just saying. This video is for every single black person out there. If you really want to f*** over this government that has f over your ancestors, if you really want to f*** over this government that helped kill Martin Luther King Jr., if you really want to help f*** over this government that killed Malcolm X, that killed Huey, and that destroyed the Black Panther Party, if you really want to f*** over this government, I'm asking you to do me a favor. Go vote for Donald Trump. Can't you see how these f devils are running around here scared the f*** of this man? Because they don't want their evil, sick locked up. So black people, if you really want to piss these and races, demons, and devils all. Vote for Donald Trump. Because they've been f***ing it up for us for the longest, and it's been them. Vote for Donald Trump. Let's see, uh, and this was a quote that I gave this black guy. I said, well, if you want me to quote Biden, if you have a problem fight figuring out whether you're for me or Trump, 
then you ain't black. <laughs> Remember that quote? Talk about a racist. Oh my God. And then this this was this was the one that set set them off, man. I tell you. I said the way Democrats think of black people is just like how the abusive husband or wife thinks of their spouse. No matter how bad you treat them, they will never stand on their own and continue to think they need the abuser for support when in reality it is no such thing. Hence, the abuser holds them in contempt. And that's what I'm saying is that the Democrat Party holds black people in contempt. They, they, they think, well, you know, we've got these people so hoodwinked that they're going to vote no matter what we do to them uh, for us. And so, you know, that's, that's, that's all I was saying. Yeah, yeah. But, of course, in Maui, and, of course, the Democrats are trafficking children. That's another thing that the three-letter agencies in the uh, Democrat Party are profiting from is all of these children coming across the border. So we've got up to 2,000 missing children in Maui. Now, we understand that, that what happens is in these, these, these catastrophic events is that people swoop in and grab up the children for, for child trafficking. And, uh, and, and I'm sorry to say the Democrat Party is all for child trafficking. Otherwise, you wouldn't have an open border, right? I mean, I, 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 that's all that I, I can say. Uh, this is getting a little long-winded. Uh, let's go into the tweets. or the, Let's see if there's anything left before I cut the video off right here. Let's just get the latest news and see if something interesting came across. Boy, I tell you, this Black and the Empire reports a lot of stuff. I, I won't rip. Here it is. Douglas McGregor, the failed war in Ukraine, America's weakening economy, rising uh, na nationwide criminality, and the open border crisis begged for decisive action. Now is a good time to negotiate. It is Washington, not Moscow, that needs to off-ramp uh, for multiple disasters. Make peace, you fools. And while make peace, you fools, he put out a, uh, an op-ed where he wrote, uh, I might have been on Substack, and uh, he wrote a paper, and, and that's, that's what he said is, you know, make peace, you fools. So we'll see. Uh, let's see if there's anything else. Well, let's cut the video off right there. We got a little bit long-winded. You guys, peace out. Stay free. And let's watch a couple clips of some Russian hardware. Run on for a long time, run on for a long time, sooner or later God's gonna cut you down, sooner or later God's gonna cut you down, go tell that globalist liar, that democrat idiot writer, that rhino rambler, that nuclear war gambler, that backbiting U.S. politician, Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down.